Hi there, Les here. It's Monday, the 16th of March, 2020. We've had a difficult winter, so this is the first video of the year. It's great to be with you again, and what a beautiful day. Today, myself and Anne are riding on the A379 to the Barbican, Plymouth. To our right here is one of the old railway bridges, and on the left, the South Hams Hospital. This year, Plymouth is celebrating Mayflower 400, which is the anniversary of when the Pilgrim Fathers set sail for America. The first village we'll pass through is Churchstow, which has a population of about 600. On the right hand side, you will see the 15th century church of St. Mary's. Almost opposite is the 13th century Church House Inn, built as a rest home for Benedictine monks from nearby Buckfast Abbey. The Church House Inn is very popular for its Sunday carvers. We've enjoyed a few family occasions there. Here we have a lovely clear view across the Dartmoor. Now approaching the village of Averton Gifford, which lies at the head of the estuary of the River Avon, or Bourne. It receives its name from the river and also from the family Giffard, who held the manor. Walter Giffard came across with William the Conqueror and helped with the Doomsday Book. We will ride around the village via the ring road. Down to our left is the very quaint hamlet of Ashford. is Dream Motorcycles and Cafe, which is popular with many riders in this area. This is Mobbury, which is a large village with a population of approximately one and a half to two thousand. It's also known informally as a market town since 1199. Every May there is a 10-day celebration of its colourful history, which includes the crowning of a carnival queen and king with a carnival procession, also a Christmas celebration, which includes the turning on of the Christmas lights. To the left is the White Hart Hotel, and to the right the Exeter Inn. The inn is the oldest pub in the village, dates back to the 14th century and has been used as a coaching inn since Elizabethan times and by royalists during the Civil War. Straight ahead is what used to be the old police station in house. It's now known as Copper's Corner To our left is the Fleet Estate, leading to Fleet House, parts of which date back to Elizabethan times. 
and was remodeled in the 19th century. It's the historic home of the Mildmay family. The house was requisitioned during World War II when Freedom Fields Maternity Hospital, Plymouth, was bombed. Several years later, it was returned to the family and is now let as retirement apartments. I remember a couple of years ago when a road deer leapt out in front of us whilst driving along here, just missing our bonnet and windscreen by inches. We're now approaching the village of Yelmton, which derives its name from the River Yelm that flows through here. On the left is Old Mother Hubbard's. The cottage is 400 years old. It's said a version of the famous nursery rhyme was written here. Further along here on the right is the Volunteer Inn, which may have been named after members of the Yeomanry, who served on a voluntary basis back in the 1800s. There is evidence that it was once a coaching inn, and also stories of ghosts having been seen here. One is that of a soldier who appears at the rear window of an upstairs room. To the left, under the arch, is the driveway down to the Kitley House Hotel. This historic manor house is on a privately owned estate, overlooking the Yalm Estuary and its own lake, in 600 acres of parkland and woodland. It's very popular for short breaks, holidays, weddings, afternoon teas and all manner of special celebrations. Looks like Anne's reminiscing. This was her journey to art college for four years. This is the small village of Brixton, and on the right is the 15th century church of St Mary's, with a tower arch 200 years older. I've been for a few rides this year. I picked up a nail on one occasion and had to replace the rear tyre. Luckily, there was only a few hundred miles of tread remaining. On the left is Otter Nurseries, founded in Ottery St Mary in 1964 by the White family. They have six branches across the southwest. All their branches have cafes and they serve delicious homemade food.
we're now crossing another old railway bridge. To our left is GT Motorcycles. This is the main dealership and workshops for Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, Ducati and many more. But also the very popular Legends Cafe. We love popping in here for a coffee and a sandwich. We are now approaching the ocean city of Plymouth. We won't travel directly into the city. We will detour round to the area known as the Barbican. We are now riding over Lara Bridge, which crosses the River Plym to our right and Catwater on the left. the name given to the western and northern sides of Sutton Harbour, which was the original harbour of Plymouth. It was one of the few parts of the city to escape the blitz of World War II. Two or three streets still retain some of the architecture of this historic fishing port. The Barbican has the largest concentration of cobbled streets in Britain and contains a hundred listed buildings. I'm sure you must have heard of the famous Plymouth Gin, which has been produced here since 1793. You can arrange a tour of the distillery, and why not? And so we've arrived, and it looks like someone's kindly left us a space. Barbican is usually a very busy area, especially in the summer months, but today, an out of season, is quite peaceful. This is the famous Captain Jasper's Cafe. We've been coming here for many years. to check out the menu before we order. Well, that was very nice. Across the water is the fish market and the National Marine Aquarium. The old fish market used to be along here before it moved. Now it's shops and restaurants. So here we are at the Mayflower Steps. The Pilgrim Fathers left here aboard the Mayflower, crossing the Atlantic to settle in North America on the 6th of September 1620. What a beautiful outlook. And in the far distance across the water is Mount Batten and the area known as Jenny Cliff, which is another of our favourite haunts. As you can see, the flags of the United States and the Union Jack are flying high today. There's more history here if you want to pause and read on a little. Here's the Leviathan art installation, known locally as the Barbican Prawn. 
So we're off again and heading around the area known as the Home. On our right is the Royal Citadel, which was built in the late 1660s and overlooks Plymouth Sound. ships out in the Sound today, Her Majesty's Naval Base Devonport is one of the three operating bases in the UK for the Royal Navy and is the sole nuclear repair and refuelling facility for the Royal Navy. It's the largest naval base in Western Europe. There's an amazing naval museum in Devonport and it's well worth a visit and it's free admission you can also arrange a tour on a decommissioned nuclear submarine, HMS Courageous, which I did last year. It was brilliant. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Over to our left is Drake's Island, named after Sir Francis Drake. The Naval Memorial on the right commemorates British and Commonwealth sailors who lost their lives in the world wars and have no known graves. And his grandfather, Chief Petty Officer Simon McCarthy, is named here. He lost his life when his ship, HMS Hermes, was sank off the coast of Sri Lanka in 1942. Down to our left is the Tinside Lido, built in 1935 and is a wonderful example of the Art Deco style. Now straight ahead is Sweeten's Tower, the original Eddystone Lighthouse and is one of Plymouth's most iconic attractions. Anne has been up the tower and a friend's daughter was married there. The tower is currently being repainted. Lovely little cafes and restaurants on the shoreline down below. To our right is the Belvedere Summer House, built in 1891 in the classical style. There are some spectacular views from all three levels. Head for home. Thanks for joining us once again, and we hope you've enjoyed the trip. If so, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Join us again next time. Bye for now.